Here's a curious way to define a sequence. Start with the integer 1. And for future terms, if the index is even, we simply copy the term that has half its index. If the index is odd, we take the sum of the two terms that flanks half its index. So for example, u4 is equals to u2. u5 is u2 plus u3. u6 is equals to u3. u7 is u3 plus u4. And so on. A crazy looking sequence. And what is even crazier is if you consider taking the ratio of successive terms. You get a sequence of rational numbers. And the crazy fact is that each positive rational number actually appears exactly once in this sequence. Sounds crazy. These sequences actually have names. The sequence of positive integers is called the Stern's diatomic sequence, whereas the sequence of rational numbers is known as the calkin wilf sequence. Actually, you can even define the calkin wilf sequence in a recursive manner using the recursion equation shown on the screen. However, we will not be going into much detail on this in this video. Instead, we will prove that the calkin wilf sequence contains each positive rational number exactly once. And what is even more amazing is that this can be done in a sequence of 5 steps that doesn't involve any complicated theory. So let's take a look. The very first statement to prove is that uk is a sequence of positive integers. This is almost obvious, but we still have to be very careful. So, this is actually obvious because each term is defined in terms of earlier terms or as the sum of earlier terms, and the first term is positive. So by using very basic induction, we can very quickly establish this statement. Okay, how about the second statement to prove? Well, with the exception of the first term u1, I claim that all terms with odd indices are actually larger than its two corresponding neighbors. So for example, u5 is larger than u4 and larger than u6. This is also actually quite straightforward to prove. Indeed, u2k plus 1 is given by the sum of uk and uk plus 1, whereas its neighbors are uk and uk plus 1 respectively. Now we invoke the first statement that all the terms are positive integers. So clearly the sum is larger than its components. Okay, how about the third statement? Now we are getting to more interesting statements. Now we'll prove that adjacent terms are relatively prime. To do this, we'll use our favorite proof technique, which is proof by contradiction. We'll assume that there exist adjacent terms which are not relatively prime. Now let us consider ua ua plus 1 as the first such pair, where the GCD is actually greater than 1. Now clearly a will be bigger than 1 because 1, 1 is a pair of terms which are relatively prime, so u1, u2 will not qualify. Okay, what do we do now? If a is even, say of the form 2k, then we can actually write gcd of u2k, u2k plus 1 equals to gcd of uk, uk plus uk plus 1, and this is the same as gcd of uk and uk plus 1. So we have established that there is an even earlier pair which are not relatively prime, and this is a clear contradiction to our assumption. Similarly, if a is odd, then we shall leave it as an exercise to the viewer. But a very similar proof actually applies. Now what does this statement tell us? This statement tells us that when we take the ratio of successive terms, we know that we will be given a rational number that is already in its reduced simplest form. Okay, we seem to be making some progress. The next statement we will prove is that pairs of adjacent terms are never repeated. And once again, we will use proof by contradiction. Assume that there exist repeated pairs. We let a be the smallest index such that ua ua plus 1 is repeated again later. Say is repeated at ub ub plus 1. Okay, what do we do now? Same thing, consider what happens if a is even. Then, 
actually UA plus 1, being the term with odd index, will be bigger than UA. So UB plus 1 is bigger than UB. And again, by the second statement, we, we can conclude that UB must be the term with even index. Okay, so A even implies B is also even. So now we can apply the formula to describe U2K and U2K plus 1 in terms of its smaller components. Same thing for U2L and U2L plus 1. And if we invert the formula around, we can write UK and UK plus 1 in terms of its larger terms, and UL and UL plus 1 in terms of its larger index terms. We see that, therefore, UK, UK plus 1 is repeated again at UL, UL plus 1. What does this mean? This means a contradiction because we have found a smaller index term that is again have a pair that is repeated later. Same thing if A is odd, we'll leave it to the viewer to prove it, but a very similar proof applies. Now what does this fourth statement tell us? It tells us that when we take the ratio of successive terms, we'll always end up with different rational numbers. So we have an injective function, so to speak, from pairs of successive terms into the rational numbers. And lastly, this is the fifth statement. We'll prove the subjectivity part. So we will prove that any ordered pair of co-prime positive integers will appear as adjacent terms somewhere in the sequence. So every fraction will ultimately come from some pair of consecutive terms in the sequence. To prove this, we will use once again contradiction. So suppose some pairs are missing in the sequence. Now look at all these missing pairs and we choose some pair that minimizes the sum. Okay, now, if this pair AB has the fact that A is less than B, then we look at the pair A comma B minus A. This is another co-prime pair, and I claim that it must also be missing. Because otherwise, we have UK equals A and UK plus 1 equals B minus A for some K then u2k will be a and u2k plus 1 will be equal to b. But we just said that ab is a missing pair. This is a contradiction because the new pair I just constructed has an even smaller sum than before. Now, same thing if a is bigger than b, a very similar proof will work. And of course, a equals b is considered already because the pair 1, 1 is not missing. It's staring right at you in the face. So, we have just proven a sequence of five statements, and together, this allows us to conclude that every positive rational number will appear exactly once in the sequence. Now, pop quiz, what is the name of the sequence of the positive rational numbers again? <laughs>